Hello and welcome to Simplified, the podcast where we belong and so do you apparently. <laughs> 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 Finally recording from the studio. Yeah, and where we belong. Much nicer and I'm acutely aware of my underpreparedness uh, right here because right? now when you say underpreparedness now you, I mean usually the script is underprepared but now do you mean like foundation and Oh like that. No like no I just meant like I'm wearing shorts and the studio is pretty cold like I know, Achha, like the heat you can wave going. See on. the production value. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this so, is true. What's up? Uh, but yeah, it's welcome. nice. It's nice it's doing nice this live. To, it's nice yeah, doing this amazing. Live. Yeah, it's all four of ages, us yeah. and three kids. It's brilliant. It's brilliant doing it live. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> 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 uh, no, don't worry. We are working on um, uh, getting the hologram machine up and running so that we can yes. have yeah. ghost of you in the st- studio here with us. This is probably my one shot at sounding better than Sri Kith with this great mic. And Sri Kith <laughs> on his uh, oh, 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 borrowed. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, I realized if Why we did? actually do get a hologram machine and we have Sri Kith over here, we'll still need to mic him up from Canada yeah, because the hologram exactly. is not going to produce voice. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey man, you don't know what the technology is capable of. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I mean, clearly we all belong here. We can just get yep, into get an episode right into it, without, yes. without uh, doing anything. But I had a question for all yeah. of you, which is that uh, uh, home is a weird construct as you grow up. But mm. like, has there been any place, situation, setting where you just felt like, wow, this is new, but I feel like I really belong here? I went to a metal fest in in uh, Belgium and it was a very different yeah. um, atmosphere from the concerts that I go to, but it felt very communal. That was nice. My favorite part was when a bunch of guys came up to us and uh, like, oh, God, you come, you've come all the way from India and they bought us all a round of beer. Like five of us <laughs> Indians, they kind of bought us all beer. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it felt pretty nice. Wait, that uh, that. Communal table has a very different meaning in Europe. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Let's stop the conversation there. <laughs> That's amazing. Hmm. Sriket. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I mean, of course, I have uh, multiple stories about Canada in the two months I've been here. But uh, I'll uh, actually refer to another story of the time I went to Japan. And in Japan, and this is the weird is this thing where for the first time I experienced the Japanese bidet. And oh man, I felt like I belonged in that toilet. Oh man. Oh my God. That toilet had like 16 settings and like I spent half an hour in that bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I will not have divulge details of what was in there, but I definitely felt like I belonged. You know, just before this um, recording, for the benefit of the listeners, the IVM social media team was in here <laughs> desperately trying to get us to say something that will help us go viral. And if that clip of Shriket <laughs> saying the words, I sat on that toilet and I felt like I belonged, is just taken out of <laughs> context I think we'll finally hit fame <laughs> but actually it's deeply profound because home is actually where the ass is no? where you feel ah, like yeah. taking a, <laughs> yeah. taking a oh, man, dump without thinking twice was, dude, I don't know how, what kind of technology they had in there but the plastic became warm right like the, the seat, <laughs> that was the you that was, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. this is amazing so yeah, you're actually had like, if your home is where yeah. you can take a good shit then when you go to somebody's place yeah, and man. say what yeah. a dump you said thank you <laughs> it's a compliment it's a compliment <laughs> like burping after a feel like in a like fancy yeah. this wasn't even in like a fancy hotel or something like I was in a hostel somewhere in Tokyo and this was just like it's just there everywhere and I was like man I could get used to this place you know so, the show is yeah. growing up when <laughs> the creature comforts you're looking for is a good uh, <laughs> comfortable <laughs> place no 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 I, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> having travelled to Europe uh, three or four years back uh, uh uh, yeah, bum sprays are yeah. very, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Unless you have that uh, stock which Narain bought long ago, yeah, I'm, I'm printed on absorbent I'm paper. The, <laughs> I'm, I'm particularly, Radha like, I, this, yeah. this memory has become even more fond for me now that I've been in Canada for two months. This place is horrible. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Narain. Okay, it, this is going to be a long WhatsApp forwardy kind Super of story. Ah, right. Chal, <laughs> nice Epis- episode yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, all the social media <laughs> It's time for the viral content. So, all apologies for tugging at heart mm-hmm. strings and everything like that. But this happened really long time back. Uh, I was newly married. Sheila had gone to Mysore. So, I had to go to Mysore as well. And, I mean, back in the day, you didn't, you know, you're pretty impoverished. So, I took a second class ticket on a train called the Udyan Express, which left from VT and went all the way to Bangalore, reached there after 24 hours. And uh, those days I had a factory and just started a factory in Vasai. So, you know, so I I get in and there's a bunch of 
फिशर फोक हु वॉज स्पीकिंग इन मराठी आई स्पीक मराठी फ्लुएंटली एंड माय माय यूजुअल प्रैक्टिस यू नो व्हेन ट्रैवलिंग इन अ ट्रेन एंड बैक देन वॉज नॉट टू ईट एनीथिंग लाइक यू सो दैट यू डोंट नीड टू गो टू द लू राइट सो यू जस्ट आई आई डोंट ईट आई जस्ट आई टेक अ अपर बर्थ आई शू टेक एन अपर बर्थ कैरी अ स्टैक ऑफ बुक्स जस्ट रीड एंड नॉट ईट अ डैम थिंग जस्ट स्टाफ सो दैट यू डोंट नीड टू विजिट द लू एंड दीज गाइज दे वर यू नो ऑन द लोअर बर्थ दे नाइस फ्रेंडली पीपल fish of folk and then i asked them where they were going they were going for some kind of a, they all christian so they're going for some kind of a christian retreat and um, so they said they are from vasai i said okay i have a factory there so they sort of you know they were very excited that somebody had actually heard of a place called vasai and they were like you know where do you, where is your factory what it is so there was a little bit of you know good camaraderie and then i sort of vanished into my book i was reading then around lunch these people observed that i wasn't eating anything so they they asked me they said you aren't eating anything so i told them that i don't because i don't eat when i'm on train i just i'm okay i'm fine and they didn't say anything and then in the afternoon you know people keep coming into the train selling stuff and i didn't eat anything then either and they noticed that and the evening was the last straw so this train starts from bombay in the morning so by dinner time uh i i was still like in my little cocoon reading and this guy comes to me and he refuses to take no for an answer he <laughs> says you haven't eaten all day and we cannot simply cannot allow that to happen yeah. and he said that in such a nice way that i had to eat i really felt at that moment that i belong to this country oh. that's the whatsapp wow. forwarding oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Still waiting yeah. for the punchline. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I genuinely thought the punchline was going to be don't do intermittent fasting. When you're on a train. From, I thought it was going from cocoon to cuckoo or something. Like oh, that. no, no, no. That's 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 your specialty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. No, but uh, but that was touching. Yeah, fully yeah. relate. Yeah, full, fully yes. relate with the. Udyan Express experience that it because that's I mean that's the train I used to take when I was in uh, college as well from there to all the way till Ahmedabad mm. and that train was one uh, I mean it was it was an endurance test yeah yeah and a <laughs> microcosm like you know like everything in the universe yeah, yeah, yeah. was there yeah like all kinds of people yeah. all kinds of things all kinds of organisms I've seen rats in there I've seen <laughs> many it's, things with more a, like a, huh. yeah and everything is coexisting yeah everything like, is yeah. lived together yeah. <laughs> you know I also everything, everything has its yeah. place you know I also realized that uh, it's a nice um, game to play when you're drunk which would be concoct a story that ends with that's when I felt I truly belonged in this country uh, you can <laughs> approach it from a multitude of emotions uh, be it warm be it funny or well let's say uh, never mind let's yeah. move on <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, okay now yes. I feel like when did you very very underwhelming but like yeah close, similar to Chuck actually I actually had the privilege of watching a world cup match at mcg i think it was the first cricket match where you know i also got to have beer in a stadium and mm. like just randomly sort of uh, we were in a row and there were south african fans behind us australian fans i just felt like a really nice place just like having you know banter mm. uh, real time and stuff like that and yeah i think uh, australia is one place i definitely feel like going back to if given a choice but anyway that's not happening but uh, the question for today is slightly different i came across this uh, very nice profound quote uh, which is that the opposite of belonging is fitting in right it hmm. seems a little counterintuitive uh, to begin with so since i saw that quote i've been thinking about it in a variety of different ways and i obviously messaged you guys and you said yeah okay let's do the discussion then i'm like okay i have to look up where <laughs> the quote comes from <laughs> <laughs> and is actually uh, from a fabulous uh, talk by this person called uh, Brené Brown uh, she has a it's it's on Netflix and i mean it's a very good thing to watch it's called the call to courage and she talks about actually like how vulnerability and courage are the same i mean it does, it's not at the opposite ends of the spectrum but the same and stuff like that but anyway i mean uh, that's not what we're talking about because uh, <laughs> there is apparently an older ted talk of hers called vulnerability which went uh, live and stuff like that and And um, it's funny, right? Because um, do you, do any of you have a Star Wars watching order? 
I haven't seen I, I haven't seen it either which <laughs> Narayan also Oh are we oh this is this what we're doing are we confessing in that case I hate lord of the okay <laughs> Srikith you lord of the rings you hate no so oh. I have done the I, <laughs> I tried thrice Narayan order. Because I didn't, I mean, obviously I wasn't there for the first few movies. So I've done 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. So three, uh, four, five, Star six, Wars watching two. order, I think, is mandatory sort of uh, learning for anyone who designs yeah. uh, UX or stuff like that. Because like the way people discover isn't always linear, right? Because yeah. mm. this particular yeah. person had a like blow out TEDx talk, which went viral like millions and millions of views. But I had never heard of her. And then her Netflix special came, I hadn't heard of her then either. And it took me that quote to sort of approach it in that reverse order or whatever, right? But so when I think about uh, belonging, the opposite of belonging. Oh, was that in. what you were trying to go through, the Star Wars oh. order? Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, I kind of went Harry Potter 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Five, six, seven. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> I read Goblet oh, first. Wow. Yeah, it was kind yeah, of weird. That is a bigger travesty. <laughs> <laughs> how did How did that happen, though? Huh? You I just got know. the book first. Yeah, I just got. Yeah, <laughs> a friend said the Harry Potter series seems to be doing well. Here's one of them. And that point, I just got in. I was reading stuff like Jeffrey Archer Woodhouse and stuff where there's no linearity to this. Yeah. So I thought, okay, start from pretty much anywhere. Oh, and then, right. like, I was in eleventh or twelfth. You could yes. like you could piece things together enough. And then it was actually kind of beautiful to actually read backwards. And then you know, oh, and and the excitement I had reading the first book. Yeah. Uh, because oh, oh this man. is where it all starts. Um, it's actually yeah, it was actually kind of nice to do that no I mean it, it does sound like a great experience I, I've done obviously the classic order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 but uh, in that like I mean I, I did I mean my favorite books are 4 and 3 so, yeah. Uh, yeah, four and three was like, the best. Uh, but anyway, this is not so a heavy. Th- <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so yeah, but yeah. no, going in the reverse order does yeah, sound, yeah, a lot sound of fun. fun right? I wish I could have done that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah interesting yeah, yeah. experiment to try. Let's do it with Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like many Liverpool <laughs> match, many Liverpool matches actually end up better if you play it in reverse. Anyway, Tony, go on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, so like when I think of belonging and the opposite of that being fitting in, I just think about like you know the time and energy I spent with people and around people these days and how true that is, right? And like, uh, I think uh, Amit Varma speaks about this a lot on his podcast, like, where is home for you, right? And, mm-hmm. and he sort of describes it as a, not necessarily a physical space, but mostly on the internet and around that and stuff like that. But it's an interesting thought, right? Like, and all of us have been, like, I've been Malu in Andhra Pradesh. Chuck, you've been a Middle East kid in yeah. Kerala. Srikethi, you've been uh, Telugu Boy growing up in Gujarat and then all over the place. Narain, you just stuck to Bombay. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, that's very interesting because uh, when you say that, especially that part about being, you know, your home might be online, uh, yeah. is what you said. So I yeah. feel like the time uh, I felt like I belonged in a place most was weirdly enough Pagal Guy in between 2005 2006 oh, and for people who don't know what this is, Pagal Guy <laughs> used to be like an MBA forum from 2000. Two to about 2010 or so. It's still around, but uh, those that, those were his golden days. And till then, I felt like I didn't really belong anywhere because growing up in Bahrain, I mean, you're studying for CBSE, you don't really have the time to belong anywhere anyway. And then I was a Gulf kid in 11th and 12th in Kerala, not knowing Malayalam very well and not knowing any of the cultural whatever over here. And then in engineering college also, you know, it was like whatever. Um, and then I wanted to write CAT and get into MICA and all that. And again, I... It, I was like I had friends and all that but was still an outlier didn't have a real community or anything and then when I went online and found these bunch of other not just MBA aspirants but folks who were as crazy as I was to get into this particular place that was like true sense of I felt like oh wow here's like tribe here's community and we had we were really close and we yeah, yeah I mean I used to spend hours at Reliance Web World in yeah. Trishur those days <laughs> oh, Reliance yeah, yeah. Web World Reliance wow. Web World in Trishur I was so I was so I was I was such a fan of Reliance Web World that we used to have a little band and I actually played with the Reliance Web World t-shirt I have a photo of me playing bass uh, but yeah I, it completely hits home like I, I, if I were to think like what are the communities or when where were the places I really felt at home those few months or years that I spent uh, on Pagal Guy I feel were like real community yeah. real life I agree home, actually yeah. 
Yeah, that that's actually a great point to say. And if I was to think about it similarly, I kind of had the similar experience. Like like you said, grew up in a different city, uh, in a city where mm. I was not from uh, technically. I mean, I don't, I didn't ever like, I never spent any time in Andhra ever, so I never fit in with the South Indian, so to speak, crowd. Nor did I really fit in with the Gujarati crowd as such, because yeah. well, skin color. So <laughs> uh, so I mean, no, it was a reality. So well, all of that stuff happened and. Uh, I mean, the place again, like for me, like uh, an equivalent to what Chuck was, was Wikipedia. Mm, Wikipedia mm, was where mm. I really fit in, like with the community over there and working with those guys. And like, it's always been like initiatives where, uh, I mean, rather than a place of home or like just generally like a friends group as such, like I'd say Wikipedia and Simplified are the places where I fit in the <laughs> most, like, you know, like, uh, I mean, the, the, the thing is, and, and it's also, uh, I, I also really found that interesting, the point that you made earlier, which is like uh, fitting in is the opposite of belonging, which actually absolutely resonates with me because fitting in requires you to change yourself as, as belonging is a come as you are type of attitude. Yeah. right? And uh, and like it, that, that acceptance of saying that, okay, this is who you are and this is fine. It's yeah. okay. We'll take you as you are. And that that aspect is what actually really contributes to belonging. And I think these are some of the places and online online communities and like people I've met online. I've met all of you guys also primarily online. I mean, I think I've seen I've seemed to find like much more of a community and a sense of belonging to the people there rather than than most people have met in like physical context. Yeah, I remember reading a piece about somebody who's, I mean, this is in the context of gaming and the avatars that you create online. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of uh, mm. a public criticism about people who spend a lot of time playing games and yeah. spend a lot of, you know, just get lost in that world completely. But there was a, I remember a very long, typical Wired article, really, a Wired long read about a person who found so much meaning in her online avatar mm. creating relationships with mm. people who she really didn't know who they were uh, in real life or where they were what gender they were or anything like that uh, they're yeah. trying to solve each other's problems with chat it was really beautiful and uh, mm. she was escaping from a lot of uh, abuse in school or marriage or whatever it was like a, yeah. uh, like yeah. escaping from a shitty real life and this gave her happiness it somehow all these chats of hers really just goes back yeah. to yeah. find yeah. happiness or whatever <laughs> right uh, but yeah um, that in another context is uh, is and that was I, I remember reading that article at just when this whole hoopla around the metaverse was starting yeah. right and that was <laughs> still the good old days when we thought that okay there was some promise that was that, yeah. that's there in these online lands yeah uh, I still think talking about holograms no, so, and, and, additionally, <laughs> and, and additionally I think also I mean um, if you were to read the book or see the movie Ready Player One right oh, like yeah. that also kind of contributes to that overall thing where I mean, we are now in a place, uh, in a in a uh, space in time. I mean, we are in a we are a place in time in such in such a way where we are in a place in certain places being able to identify. I mean, create and define our own identities for ourselves. They are not yeah. thrust upon us, and they are not like mm. things that we have to live with, right? Yeah. And when that happens, I think a lot of people who are who are quite uncomfortable either with social situations or with their own identities in the real world are unable to change them in any which way are finding meaning and finding comfort and finding a lot of uh, happiness by like creating identities for themselves online. Mm. And uh, with these identities and these identities mean a lot to them. Like, I mean, it's it's trivialized and like and like pushed away by like people who don't really see the meaning of this mm -hmm. and feel like this is a put on. But it's actually I mean, it's it's what you choose. It's like like they say it's the family you choose versus the family you have. Right. Yeah. So mm. I don't it, consume I don't others. consume a lot of pop culture. So maybe you guys will be better suited to answer this but it seems like it would be a powerful storyline for a lot of fiction right which is dis disparate people from different worldviews who don't look like they belong together somehow clicking and coming together it seems like may, I don't know maybe the Avengers maybe or may, uh, maybe bridge. <laughs> <laughs> wow. again indie music references from Tony Weil in the studio this is the thing last time we were here you read out Parikrama lyrics don't think we forgot that young man but uh, jokes are, I mean may, to some extent maybe even Ted Lasso but do you feel like do you have you come across any examples like that like where people like like complete polar opposites or don't feel I mean doesn't look like they belong together somehow they find meaning together right I don't know it just seems to me like that should be a thing overcoming I, the odds I have another lens okay so this is here's so we are all different everyone is necessarily different that's 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 the human condition you cannot 
like two twins cannot be similar to like identical to each other the thing is do you does does the universe that you are entering make uh, compel you to change yourself like make makes makes you feel that it you need to change yourself in order to be in that universe mm. yeah so uh, i'm referring now to uh, a thing so my, my wife uh, sheila she's from mysore and and uh, incidentally is a twin and incidentally <laughs> as a twin no yeah. that's not uh, yeah i don't jump into the issue but i i went to whenever i used to go to mysore mysore is a very charming place first of all when when at least way back when i got married everyone knew everyone else so wherever i went i was treated like everyone seemed mm. to know who i was i mm. i wouldn't know them from adam but they would be you know they would be chatting me up they would be sort of uh, you know offering me taking me to dinner or whatever i mean just yeah. everyone was super friendly super nice and that was because it was a small place small social circle everyone seemed to know everyone else and uh, sheila seemed to resent that she when she came to bombay it was the exact opposite mm-hmm. bombay mm-hmm. no one knows you no one cares yeah. right so she found that immensely liberating and mm. she 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 to this day she, she that's the biggest thing she loves about bombay is that nobody cares nobody cares how you look nobody that. cares yeah <laughs> and uh, so she she says she belongs to bombay i mean though she is from mysore and mm. you've kind of like felt the other way around and i way. was yeah i <laughs> because i i mean you know i go occasionally and mm. uh, like everyone treats me like as i don't need to change anything but for sheila that thing belonging which meant that she didn't need to uh, for example in mysore she was judged if she wore particular kind of clothes mm, mm. or if she wore a hair in a particular way yeah. or if she you know all those kind of things right and yeah. uh, in bombay nobody really cares yeah. i mean you could yeah, yeah. so i think what i mentioned this before also like one of the key reasons why i will stay in bombay is like i have a daughter and i don't want her to grow up uh, in any other city in india other than bombay right because it's just inclusive yeah um, and yeah relatively of course because there yeah. are people who find uh, uh things wrong with bombay but yeah uh, if you ask sheila hands down it's the most uh, f- sort of inclusive uh, yeah. for especially for for women yeah uh, strangely enough in it's inclusive because people don't give a shit about yeah, it yeah exactly yeah so yeah. and also the lack yeah. of space right like yeah. one of the things that i keep saying is mumbai is the only city where you need to step outside your home to get privacy to get right? Right? <laughs> like so like yeah. Yeah. you if you have to make out you have to yeah, go to yeah, marine yeah. drive because at home there are eight people and yeah. like one beach and, and i like, and i suppose that is a weird sense of belonging by itself right yeah. like uh, like when you have all have to shit. struggle to get in the local train to get Yeah, yeah. you all have the same expression nobody yeah. hates each other on a local train you're yeah. like listen we are all in this shit together the yeah. others coming next so just yeah. brace yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's exactly i mean how it was like when when i just come to bombay i mean i used to commute from bandra to uh, church gate and like at peak time so i mean i was i used to see the worst of it and sometimes like an idiot without realizing i used to get into virar fast as well yeah. Yeah. which used to be uh, another experience altogether like you have an out of body experience when you do that but uh, so the whole thing was i mean in that in that context and you're very right with that like there used to be like this huge mass there's a crush like people are le- legit like we are causing pain to each other at some point of time right like that's like yeah, as yeah. as hard as it gets and there is no hatred because everybody understands the situation and everybody knows that we are here because of a particular reason and this is how it is Right, yeah. so there is absolutely. In fact, there is camaraderie. Like people are trying to drag, pull each other in, yeah. and like kind of hold on to each other. Someone's hanging out. There's another guy who's got his hand on him, and he's dragging him in. And I was like, in adversity, like that kind of like sense of like belonging and like uh, sense of like uh, watching out for the other person was is is pr- quite incredible yeah. in Bombay. And yeah. also, I mean, just to just to c- conclude on Tony's thing, a thought was. I mean I th- I remember the first couple of times I met you Tony like it was it is hilarious how your attitude has kind of evolved over the years like <laughs> when, we had, when we first met Tony yeah. I I remember this very clearly I was like ha so Tony how are you liking it Bombay oh it's good for a while I think before I leave from here it'll be nice like I hope I can leave soon like that kind of attitude Tony had I, yeah. initially and like now now to moving to this is where I want my child to grow up so yeah wow. too much yeah, yeah. yeah. but one of the things that I just wanted to explore uh, on what you said about Pagal 
there, right? It was also a forum where, uh, by design, a lot of people would get vulnerable, right? Mm. Because everyone was looking for a blackie, as it was called yeah. back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Which for the young ones, uh, back when they were like just six IAMs, a blackie was uh, all the IAM calls, right? Bangalore, yeah. Lucknow, Ahmedabad, Calcutta, Kodi Kodi and Indore. But oftentimes, many people took more than one attempt to nail cat. And like, did you see that sort of vulnerable, like people being comfortable with being vulnerable on those forums? I guess because... It's interesting, right? Because uh, right now, we it's a well-known trope that your online persona and offline thing can be different. And I'm sure all of us can name examples of somebody who we yeah. thought was like super crazy dynamic or whatever online. You yeah. meet them in real life and they are reclusive or the other way around, right? Or whatever the case may be. I think that was the first time I felt that. To some extent, it was because many people were behind that veil of anonymity. So, yeah. you know, they could afford to be as vulnerable or they could also be as abusive or whatever as possible, you know, hiding behind, uh, you know, an avatar or whatever. But absolutely, 100% you're right. Even people with real names and all that did not mind opening up. I felt myself opening up about many things for the first time, which I wouldn't have spoken to somebody in real life. Yeah, And maybe it was because I felt like, okay, these guys aren't going to question me back immediately and I have time to yeah. frame a response. So, I don't know, I, I that, that did feel kind yeah. of uh, yeah. liberating to some extent and also made me think, hey, what are the other thoughts, feelings that I might be suppressing or what are the opinions that I might be suppressing yeah. uh, which I don't want to necessarily talk. And, and you also feel this way when you see other people talk about other topics, right? Yeah. For example, many of, uh, I won't say opinions, but many of the, what do you say, your approach to debate and all that was shaped in a weird way by <laughs> what you see online, right? Yeah. For example, just just a random We example. all grew up reading the comments, although. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much, right? I uh, Like, for example, there was a very, very active uh, rock music discussion forum on Pagal Guy. And some of the comments over there and some of the uh, things that people had were absolutely vicious. Uh and I was like, oh, okay, you can argue like this also. I mean, like, and there were some parts like, okay, I don't particularly agree with that, but I'll see, you know, how he's, you know, making his point and all that. And then you think, okay, can I just take, transpose that, if not the facts, can I transpose that way of thinking into, say, politics or whatever it is, something else. So I guess what yeah. is, I mean, the answer, that's a long-winded answer, yeah. way no, of saying so yes. The, the reason I was asking was... Uh, a lot of us like met on Twitter or forums mm -hmm. and then moved oh, into Orkut, close case, yeah. WhatsApp groups, right? And yeah. like where you get to be vulnerable, especially I feel this is that like when you're watching sports together, right? Yeah. And like we have a, uh, the what the legends group uh, evolved yeah. into is the legends yeah. cricket group where practically like you're going through many emotions simultaneously when a team is playing and like yeah. you're like yeah. making comments and also getting into debates, right? Yeah. And yeah. also being vulnerable to a real great degree because it's not like Twitter that it's public you sort of have arguments and debates but at the end of the day like you also feel like you know you really belong so I think yeah. with sports it's it's much more easy and I was just thinking like is vulnerability a factor in sort of like the more vulnerable you are like you can be you feel like you belong there or the more you feel like you belong there the more vulnerable yeah and I think anything that has anything to do with emotion like I'm sure like Tony and Shriket both of you have had several moments like this when it comes to yeah. uh, you know when it comes to sports Shriket I can't imagine what you must have felt during like the 2005 Champions League final for example and I have experienced the 2019 Champions League final also <laughs> ha, <take laughs> the care. more recent one yeah yeah that, that, that's okay that, that they, they were expected to win this final uh, and I have experienced that many many times at concerts like I have yeah. seen like fully grown men like weep yeah. during metal shows and stuff like that so yeah I think whenever there is like some and people understand right they put hands around each other like yeah we get it dude like yeah, we, yeah. we know what it's you're going okay. through weep. so yeah I'm curious yeah, yeah, why uh, does metal make you cry <laughs> no I mean I'm serious question so yeah. my, that is my test for good music it should bring tears to your eyes so yeah I mean that's my yeah so so music. two yeah. things right one it could be catharsis even though it's heavy it's not mindless this it comes from a place of emotion I suppose and second there could just be very very sharp contrast between uh, uh, you know between between certain passages mm -hmm. uh, which are just beautifully constructed it just happens to be heavy and uh, abrasive and all that like certain like Opeth for instance they have some very very like 
deep parts and very emotional parts which aren't heavy at all in fact one of them reminds me of a certain moment and i was crying at the uh, opet show in nh7 and one of my be- uh, one of my friends vishal he is like i know exactly why you're doing this go ahead it's all and wow. and uh, actually it was quite touching because an absolute stranger came up to me and said happens happens to all of us is fine let it go and that was beautiful and yeah. after that they launched into something else that was like absolute next brainer stuff i mean i stuff. think i think it can extend to a lot of other music i think because music is so strong uh, yeah not just memories. music i'm saying anything that yeah, has yeah. a emotional which is why i started with sports right sports music pretty yeah. much anything else for all you know there are tech bros in silicon valley who are looking at linkedin series b oh, presentation God. to greylock and saying ah, <laughs> ah, read <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry. Naren thoughts on like vulnerability and like belonging have you felt that or uh, so yeah I, I sort of missed that discussion because I <laughs> stepped out no, to take okay. a phone call but food maybe well, a shared moment around food or I don't know may, maybe uh, I think Naren you might have experienced like who do you choose most? to be vulnerable to yeah it can be family also <laughs> I uh, I can't think of hand what no, you, you but I I can I need I do need to chip in actually uh, yes. this is this is like uh, 10 minutes uh, back we were talking about local trains and yes. so one of my fascinations is there's yin and yang in the universe everywhere right so opposing mm-hmm. things yeah. so one of the yin and yang moments in the local train is all the tall guys okay the short guys have to m- smell the tall guys armpit right? <laughs> yeah. the whole uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but all the tall guys have to smell the short guys hair oil so that's the yin and yang of the, yeah. so, wow amazing yeah, yeah. i'm not sure if that's the answer that you're looking for <laughs> no, that's no, 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 i i, I just uh, yeah so i was on yeah. a different thread in my mind yeah. so uh, for the listeners what happened was i got a call from my factory and i always pick up call from a factory because i don't know what the hell is happening mm-hmm. right it could be potentially serious it yeah. was wasn't serious it turns out that yeah. they wanted some kind of uh, part which they are not able to get so they wanted yeah. me to see if i could order it online or whatever so yeah. no but but you yeah. brought your vulnerable self to this podcast like yeah quite a few times right like so, uh, the the thing about uh, you know being being in places where uh, where you are vulnerable vulnerable is strangely vulnerability is uh, uh, you know it it's it's one of those yin and yang things yeah. right so in in one way it's uncomfortable mm-hmm. when you expose it's like yeah. a cat exposing its belly right you don't <laughs> yeah. do it to yeah. and yet you often times do it to perfect strangers right? you yeah. expose your vulnerability with for and for that little moment you don't really even think of what might happen if yeah. somebody yeah. took cognizance of that vulnerability and decided to exploit yeah. it yeah. and uh, it is deeply satisfying as well yeah i do believe all all of us need uh, need to be we are all vulnerable we, we put on shows we put on uh, yeah. tough experiences in fact i'd go to the extent arena of saying that it's actually easier to be vulnerable to strangers than with people yeah. who are close to hence the so curious pet, like uh, and, it's yeah. not curious at all like for example there are things that i opened up to my therapist which would take me a long time to therapist to, is okay therapist but um you know a relative stranger let's say me okay and as opposed to your loved ones mm. right mm. and you are far more likely to say, say some things to me than to your loved ones yeah. yeah despite the fact that you really love them deeply you trust them at a level you don't trust yeah, yeah. you know you when 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 is family or uh, spouses or whatever you the trust is on a very different level yeah yeah and yet why is it that we feel comfortable or even even satisfying five find it satisfying to expose our vulnerabilities to relative strangers I'm that sure, mystifies sh- me yeah i'm yeah. sure it goes back to evolution or something in yeah. some way yeah. I, i don't know i think i think once the gar- uh, th- this is saying in uh, uh, you know marketing and advertising right whatever happens in the boardroom is just for show the actual meeting point the actual actionable so whatever happens in the smoking room when everyone mm-hmm. lets their guards da- guard yeah. down and there's also the other saying that two people who work in advertising will truly bond only when they find a common client to bitch about and that's when like ha ah, okay you have been there to and you can see the shoulders droop This, and like ha ah, you know i don't know i i goes back to the point it, of it, wonder it, it you find you reminds, find yeah. i think mm-hmm. the i think the thing over there for all these things from football to metal to advertising guys bitching about a client is you find common ground or yeah. you find like acha okay you're not 
here and I'm not here. We have something. There is something shared. I yeah. think that's the common strain. Common ground is usually Anfield in some oh, cases. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that let, letting guard, letting your guard down, and uh, exposing a facet of your character. Yeah, the which, cat uh, analogy yeah, is a yeah. nice one, by the way. Yeah, belly of the cat. Yeah. So uh, this this reminds me of uh, like uh, mandatory. Uh, yes, Prime Minister analogy. We should here. actually uh, have like yeah. I feel like we should have like a little uh, you know audio <laughs> like ta 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 so in one of the episodes, so the Prime Minister has a political advisor named Dorothy. So Dorothy and mm. uh, they, she has an office. And Humphrey is desperate to get the office out, her out of that office. Yeah. So she, he has this master reorganization uh, plan and she is now shifted to some other place. So she comes to Jim Hacker and says, uh, Humphrey told me that, you know, you had yeah. your office. Did you? And so this guy is like, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, uh, he came, I thought it was... Don't you realize the civil service has been trying to get me out of that office for years? <laughs> I don't know. I don't see what important it is, is you know, photocopy. So she says, this is, you know, I this, so she, she lays out, this is the, the thing, this is the cabinet room, this is the thing. And this is the men's gents loo. It says, I have to be opposite the loo. <laughs> so Jim Hacker is like, have you seen anyone about this? The men's loo. Huh? Why? Because nearly everyone in the cabinet is a man. And I get to listen to everything they say to each other when they pop out for a pee. <laughs> and that's that's how I kept my your predecessor fully informed about what was going on behind his <laughs> back. So that's nice. that's uh, that's like nice. that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So two two things that I wanted to explore on this topic, right? One is that uh, at least me, by virtue of uh, never making enough money to buy a house in Bombay, uh, and, I do. And, <laughs> and being in a relatively sort of uh, reasonable position, have an extremely first world problem to think of where I would want to sort of settle down or like where would my ideal life be kind of thing, right? As opposed to when you were growing up, a lot of things happened by accident, right? Mm -hmm. Like you got into an engineering college or MBA or, you know, a company and you had to fit in or like find cocoons where you belong yeah. within that uh, sort of setup. So have you guys thought about it? You know, how do you approach uh, something like that? Like when in your sort of conception of if you're given the privilege to uh, find a place where you belong, like does that, how, how do you go about that? Wow, that's a loaded question, yeah, and that is quite a, a leap from. It's a um, profound question. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't think it's profound as much as wow. That's quite, you took quite a leap from the yeah. from from where we were before. I'll take a stab at that because that's something that actually um, you know, Divya, uh, my wife and I were thinking of uh, uh, recently. We went to a small little island in Thailand um, recently. So we we do this thing every time whenever we go on vacation, right? Like we obviously have a lot of fun wherever we go, Europe, Philippines, Sri Lanka, uh, whatever. And we always ask ourselves, would we want to settle down mm. over here? Right? Mm. And the answer has always been no. It's been like, like no, there's no debate. Like from yeah. Amsterdam to wherever, like uh, to Andaman, it's always been like no. And we found some reason or the other. This little random island in the middle of uh, the Gulf of Thailand, Koh Tao, was the first place we actually paused and looked at each other and like, maybe wow. and I don't know there was a lot of factors um, one of course the diving was great and we can see us doing that forever but also there's just a vibe of the island again sense of community belonging and all that it just felt like strangers from around the, uh, we've been on many places where people come together to dive but there was something about this place the energy of the place it just felt like nobody cared I mean the, mm. the, the good parts about Bombay yeah. in some sense nobody cared you can like yeah. come bring yourself be yourself but it also felt freer there were lots of things to do and you you know, it also felt like a place where, hey, we could possibly construct a life over here. We could like work out of here if we wanted to. Uh, the infrastructure was good. But I suppose this is what that bridge that you were looking for from, mm. you know, where yeah. uh, like a place where you belong to. Could this be a place that you settle down in? That was the first time that we actually like said, hey, maybe, yeah. maybe. And not, not that it's going to happen anytime soon anyway. I hope that. I know yeah. kind of answers the question because yeah. we could see ourselves doing a lot of touristy things but also I think and here's the important thing yeah. I think it's not about the touristy things right? the touristy things are great for a week right they always you know uh, there are some places that are just great 
that are amazing to spend a week or a, a week or two in but it's about the everyday can what does your everyday look like again going back to amit's yeah. quote right like your yeah. in your ideal life what does your everyday look like not the outlier day but the regular boring day and the regular boring day looked great over hmm. there it would be cheap uh, i mean cheap ish um and there was enough to do on a regular basis yeah. you know over there so yeah i guess that would I, yeah I think I can I can take a slightly meatier stab at that because coming I mean, from I'm the just, only vegetarian <laughs> in the group yeah <laughs> yeah I, I think being I mean I I'll talk about my past two months in Canada as such and like also what was one of the, I mean it became one of the reasons why I wanted to move here and I've kind of experienced that over here is just I mean uh, since I since I kind of started stepping out of India and visiting other places I've kind of been like a little I've been a bit of a sucker for places that are nicer you know mm, mm. like generally like places that have i mean where people are nice where there is no rush to like push everyone aside like there's mm. no rat race actively outside in the world in like the small uh, things everywhere and additionally i had like a particular experience so canada has been amazing from that context where i mean you're generally like i it was the most hilarious thing this one time i was uh, so here you have like obviously there are i mean you have like your pedestrian signals and all that stuff but certain smaller intersections are not like they don't have pedestrian signals at which point the pedestrians have the right of way so if the pedestrian is crossing the car must stop right now i was like it was the middle of the night and i was walking back home or something and i was just standing at a corner street corner checking my phone for like just trying to find out where i have to go and i was just standing there for about 5 minutes and then i noticed that there was a car standing right there waiting for me to cross and the car stood there for about 3 minutes waiting Whoa. for me to cross <laughs> just because i was standing at the edge of the road and they said pedestrian has right of way so the car stood for 3 minutes just waiting for me to cross the guy didn't even honk or anything it's too polite like it just waited <laughs> that's right. a, that, that's polite then, to a fault uh, <laughs> like, yeah. then i was like oh my god and i felt so guilty i quickly crossed and i waved and i said thank you sorry <laughs> and like i went away so i mean stuff like that was like is just incredible but besides that like another thing that happened which is um the 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 niceness or i'd say the welcoming attitude right like mm. that's something that i feel is very uh, like making people feel comfortable when they come here right in that sense i saw that in a very real tangible way when i went to saw, see my first hockey game over here right so there was a match between an american team the buffalo sabers and uh, the local toronto maple leafs right so uh, what happened is at the beginning of the game which is a tradition in the nhl the national anthems of both the teams are played so the american national anthem as well as the canadian national anthem and uh, when they were playing so when they uh, when it started i just heard like a smattering in the crowd just singing the american national anthem for a bit mm, all right yeah. and uh, i was like okay i didn't understand what was happening and then the canadian national anthem played over the pa and i was like initially i was like that's kind of crappy like they didn't play the american national anthem on the pa but the uh, sorry american national anthem on the pa but the canadian one and then i saw the news later and i found what happened like the pa system cut out like it had a malfunction and the people that were singing were the canadians were singing the american national anthem oh. like it was all the canadians like got together because the pa cut out they sang the national american national anthem for that and i really felt like a sense of belonging because i was like for me that's what i feel patriotism is about it's about being so secure in your own national identity that you are feeling like you feel like i am comfortable i'm absolutely comfortable in welcoming my guest to this home to this to my home without like and honoring their traditions without feeling insecure about my own that's brilliant right? yeah amazing and and so and i felt and that was a sense of belonging because i felt that was something that resonated with my values mm. in my own way so mm. i think there is there are all these micro feelings of belonging where you may not belong to the land i'm not used to the weather i'm not used to all of these other yeah. factors but like there's something within the character of the place that resonates very strongly with me yeah yeah, yeah. interesting you mentioned about uh, hosting and stuff like that because i sort of wanted to throw this to narain because you obviously mm-hmm. have found a home and stuff like that mm-hmm. and uh, you really love food right and like yeah. sort of presenting it to people as well so yeah. do you have a sort of framework for framework is a bad word but mm-hmm. you understand what i mean for who you invite home for dinner yeah so i like to invite people for dinner for two reasons right so one is it's uh, when you go to restaurants or when you go when you want to meet people right so how do you meet people how do you get to know people before before the internet mm. it was you met people for dinner mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, in bombay increasingly 
uh, restaurants are uh, either have loud music so basically you just sort of <laughs> nod at each other smile yeah. and you could be saying like bad things under your breath and no one would be the wiser <laughs> there is it has its own uh, joy but uh, you know that's not what i'm looking for and the other reason is when you share a meal there, there's a sort of a bond so yeah. you know you it's it's usually a, you can't really shortlist people for that so you you have to uh, and I, so i i started i i decided i'd much rather get people over because you could spend a much longer restaurants tend to show you out they they yeah. just want somebody yeah. else to you know uh, use that table that table is their plant and machinery so they they want to maximize its throughput <laughs> so i don't uh, i've never almost never made a very bad have sometimes some i mean you 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 get people uh, uh, you know over for dinner and then they they don't fit in in such a bad way that they actually piss everyone off yeah. so that that happens very yeah. rarely but it does happen no i think then the yeah. question is who do you invite a second time yeah so your second time obviously <laughs> you you know you know you know all of us have been to yeah, narayan's yeah. house oh, twice no time. okay yeah. <laughs> checklist okay cool cool yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a safe question to ask <laughs> <laughs> so i it's it i you know my my it's been a tradition even even from my father's time he my father would just collect people right so he's a, so i have a friend uday shankar mm-hmm. some of you know him his uh, sort of motto in life is i he, i collect interesting people that's what he says wow. oh. so that's a very nice yeah. way to look at it and uh, my dad was like that so he had absolutely the most mystifying and uh, you know very generally interesting people i mean people there was a literally anyone somebody who has a small automotive repair shop was his friend some big doctor was his friend some you know r- completely random people and they were all interesting in their own way and mm-hmm. uh, so he used to just invite everyone over my mother used to uncomplainingly cook because we didn't really have domestic servants or anything like that she just cook up something and so uh i don't remember how i started off on this topic but yeah uh, yeah it it was yeah. how do you decide whom to yeah. you know you know and uh, when so there is also a graciousness among people when they accept an invitation for for a meal it's mm. not that anyone is starving it's not yeah. it's that if somebody comes to your house it's basically an honor that person bestows upon you they agrees to come spend waste few hours of their time come all the way mm. and you know sort of be there listen to all your boring shit and go back <laughs> and come and come back another time and come back another time yeah yeah i mean it's it's really uh, because meals i mean you could have a better meal mm-hmm. like off swiggy man why would you go to anyone mm-hmm. else to eat mm-hmm. a meal yeah. yeah unless you really wanted to spend time with them yeah interesting yeah <laughs> i think it's a deep profound I mean, conversation <laughs> <laughs> i think i yeah, should throw it to chuck and say what dinner invites do you accept <laughs> <laughs> oh you're waiting yeah. for no me. no i think so it was you can if you want I'm to as long as if beer is there i'm there <laughs> hey there was another thing i remembered which i wanted to yeah. when when shiket was talking about how nice canadians were mm. so the legendary badasses the opposite side is a new york New Yorkers are oh notorious. Which have literal rat races. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, I am walking here. Is yeah. the familiar refrain. And uh, so one of my cousins who lives in New York, we went to New York. We stayed with her. She told me that you know what is the correct way to ask us a New Yorker the time, what the time is. So I said no. So here's her answer. She says. Excuse me sir can you tell me the time or should i just fuck off <laughs> 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 yeah. the opposite is just so close to canada we're just complete opposite yeah yeah, yeah. interesting mm-hmm. yeah i think uh, anything else you want? no not yeah. really i so, i belong um, here <laughs> 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 sorry sir can you say yeah no so additionally i mean i, I about this whole thing about inviting people home there was also a very interesting way of how um, i think there's a very distinct difference between how indians invite people home versus like people in other countries like i i was just discussing and like observing this to how i mean here in canada or in like other western civilizations how people invite them home like in india you invite people home to and you're as a you're a host they're a guest you're expected to entertain mm. right there's a lot of like in 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 north america sing for uncle in canada especially 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you're seeing for <laughs> uncle, then you're you're sitting on the couch and your guest is constantly staring at you and you're constantly like, you're, you have that responsibility yeah. to entertain, right? Yeah. Versus uh, here, like, the, the thing is, like, if someone invites you to their home, like, they'll be like, yeah, you know, there's food, there's like, firstly, there's a bring your own culture. So you bring your own whatever, like, if you want, especially like, I was going to, I went to another friend's place who was like, except for me, everyone else was not, not I mean, everyone, I was the only vegetarian there. And uh, so they were like, oh, maybe you want to bring your own food. So I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so I brought my own food. Like it was a bring your own booze uh, kind of thing as well. So you bring your own booze. Uh, you're in the this thing, the host, so to speak, would come and speak to you for a little bit and like whatever. But then everyone's doing their own thing. You come in and out, you chill, you watch the television, you go to the fridge and grab a beer if you want to. Like the concept of hosting in North America, in a lot of contexts, unless it's a one-to-one thing, like if someone's hosting a party kind of thing, it's a lot more relaxed. Like nobody's required mm. to entertain versus in India. So I think mm. what also, I mean, coming to the belonging part of things, you can be very alone in a party. And like if you're invited to someone place, you can someone's place, you can still be very alone uh, yeah. in that context versus in India where like if someone's inviting you home, you are going to be like taken care of. Like that mm. is... That is a non-negotiable as far as this is concerned. So, I mean, even hosting and like being a guest have very different definitions as you go across cultures. So, yeah, I mean, just, just as an aside, I mean, when I was hearing Nareen talk about that, it just came to me and I was like, yeah, I mean, being a guest can have very different connotations. It's, it's also a lot more freeing. Like you don't have like a, I mean, you don't have guest areas where you have to stick to. You can go anywhere in the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, otherwise yeah. in India, you have like, this is where, you, this is your corner. You stay here. Don't go to any other places. <laughs> so we have traversed quite the terrain from Pagal Guy to our engineering <laughs> college days to yeah. hosting to Local and trains. field and metal concert. So Local trains, you well, came to this uh, recording, Tony, with a few <laughs> questions and thoughts. So uh, curious, have you got like, have you found common strands, thoughts? Or? No, it's interesting, right? Like, I mean, I think back to the times that I've spent fitting in or thinking that I was belonging uh, especially like when I mentioned mm. like a lot of it is autopilot right like yeah. when I went to engineering college in NIT Varangal I automatically hung out with all Malus because like there was a stated thing saying yeah. um, mm. you know Kerala state X state Y state right and like it didn't matter that like a lot of them were not similar to you etc the biggest sort of draw was that simply the fact that they come from the same state as you yeah. do and probably have the same yeah. diet and same cultural references. But like when you double that age, it's a very interesting sort of question to say. Uh, it's almost like, especially for Malus, I feel, mm-hmm. who've gone out of the state, you don't fit in anywhere, right? Like yeah. I have uh, seen people and Malayalis generally travel everywhere, mm-hmm. like from Gulf to Australia to Ireland to America. And the thing that they do immediately is find like other mm-hmm. Malayalis, right? Yeah. And that becomes their <laughs> sort of uh, community and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. but for me, I don't think I can even do that, right? Because like, I've also seen the other side of what this culture yeah. represents. And like, there are certain things that I don't identify with. Yeah. Which yeah. brings you to a unique conundrum to say like, you know, so like, therefore, <laughs> where the fuck do you go? Right? <laughs> like, it's, uh, I, yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's going to be. A- and actually, that comes back around to the first question you raised, Tony, about what is this definition of home? Like, for yeah. a lot of us, like, uh, I mean, maybe Nareen excluded, like, I have, I mean, if you ask me where is home right now, I will have a very difficult que- answer. I will like a very difficult time giving that answer because, I mean, it's constantly been shifting for me for so long mm, and like, yeah. Even even the people in life keep shifting. Like, you know, your parents live at a certain point of time, then you have a partner or whatever else. Like all of these definitions keep on shifting over a period of time. And then eventually you're in a place where, you know what, I, I just find like values and certain people at certain points of time and like certain ideas that you stick with. And that's what mm. home is. Like the yeah. definition of home is like, wherever you feel like you belong the most at any point of time. So I guess, uh, I mean, the biggest constant I'd say for me, like the biggest home that I've had is probably simplified for the last six years. (laughs) (laughs) But but actually like, this is a question of extreme privilege, obviously, right? Yeah. That you can choose what yeah. you want to do. Yeah. But I think the unclish plus behavioral science <laughs> slash economics answer is to just 
buy a damn home because like no. people <laughs> people rationalize what they're yeah. dealt with right like yeah. if you suddenly have to do something then you say yeah it's a great choice and then you rationalize it so just buy a damn home <laughs> and then you'll automatically <laughs> and, and, sort of you know i wanted to put a content plug over here there's a channel that i've been hooked on to recently it's pretty popular on youtube i might have spoken about it on the show before it's a channel called yes theory it's basically yeah. a channel yes theory yes theory and i mean it started off on the simple theory to, on Ree's goals uh, uh, Oh, God, okay. no, never mind. <laughs> it started off as one of those, uh, you know, prank channels, prank or uh, challenges things, uh, uh, channels where they say yes to anything. Ah, okay, you know, okay, that's okay. basically what it yeah. uh, what it started off as. Initially, it started off as a very Mr. Beast kind of thing. I took a stranger around the world, that kind of thing. But <clears throat> over the years, over the last couple of years, especially, their tack has shifted to slightly... This conversation kind of yeah. uh, things where they actually put themselves in very uncomfortable situations and find positives from there. For example, one show that I, one episode that I, uh, the last video that they released and what you said about Mallus and all that uh, just hit home, where they went, they were curious about the life of sumo wrestlers and they found a sumo wrestling training um, play, uh, dojo, it's called, in, mm. uh, in yeah. Osaka, I think. And one of the guys actually stayed with the, wrestlers over there uh, not speaking a word of Japanese but just figuring out stuff along the way and they communicated via Google Translate and stuff like that The it's it's a beautiful watch part, it's part hilarious part super warm and all that and there are many many examples like this they travel to the least travelled country in the world and yeah. they put themselves in a lot of the situation their, their entire mantra is seek discomfort which I think is a beautiful philosophy mm. and the one of the stoics used to do that yeah yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of stoic Epictetus, philosophy in there. Yeah, yeah there's a, they, they, they in fact reference uh, stoicism yeah. a fair bit in their videos. And the end outcome of many of these, apart from you know a very warm, glowing feeling, uh, is you know there are common things that bring us all together. So I might be an American coming from here all the way to a dojo in Tokyo where the life is completely different but there are some human values that connect us and we can, home is what you make of it, you know, that sense of belonging or whatever that you're saying. Um, this, like I mean, is there in so many different situations. So you may find home or you may find belonging with people who you share nothing else in common yeah. whereas with people who are quote unquote like you, your same demographic race or whatever you may have nothing uh, in yeah. fact with your own family you might have less uh, <laughs> less common ground than you might with uh, uh, with strangers yeah. so yeah um, so, sorry just I mean very random but uh, have you heard that This American Life episode called The Feather Thief mm -mm. Uh, it's a fascinating episode basically there's this guy who's an actual musician a very accomplished musician uh, ended up like stealing feathers or birds that Charles Darwin or one of those guys found from some of those islands and his and his buddy was someone some Vietnamese uh, refugee who stays in uh, Netherlands or something like that and like they've just connected over this over a forum and they are basically like involved in one of the biggest heists of mm. national history amazing and stuff like that but that, that episode was damn good it's <laughs> going to be soon made into a Netflix series or something wow. like crazy wow well, there we are content plugs also <laughs> what more do you want life lessons content yeah. plugs too much yeah. Yeah, too much. <laughs> wow, that was Ooh. a fun episode. Yeah. It uh, was profound. Yeah. Yeah, profound. Thankfully, uh, yeah. they put tables between us so we don't just reach out for an awkward hug or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just yeah. we'll just stretch out across yeah, the screen like this. Yeah. See, you can't see us, yeah. but yeah, that's what we're doing right now. All right. Okay, awesome. That's, that's thank you, Tony, it. for bringing <laughs> another uh, of these. No, really, thank doozies. you for bringing yeah, doozies to the table. Yeah, so, yeah. Narin, you know what to do. Yes. A beautiful episode. Let's yeah. see. So, stay safe. Stay at home. Stay at home. <laughs> 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 yeah, stay at home and stay simple. <laughs> That's not the way I thought this episode would end, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 